Hello, I am back for an update on the shoulder. Just very quickly, in my last video, I said that I hadn't really experienced anybody with these problems, but then I did some research. I found this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. I put a video out last week about how I was having lots of pain and didn't know what it was, but I have got my MRI results back today, which I'll be sharing with you in a moment. Um, but I've got to tell you, it's been the most challenging week um, for a very long time, for me anyway, just dealing with pain. There were a few issues in the fact that my MRI report got lost on its way to the GP, so that just extended the time in being able to get the GPs call me back to go through the results and I think it's just been that time in between like waiting and dealing with the pain and then just trying to like process what the next steps are. I'm also going to be explaining a little bit about how my arm has changed in the fact that it's lost like almost all the mobility completely. Um, it's even more painful than it was when I was talking about it last week. And the fact that I've got the same issue now developing in this right shoulder. So I'm gonna be talking to you about that. So let's go through the MRI scan results. I'm literally only going to talk to you about the issues that have come out from this. Um, so the first thing is that there is diffuse oedema and thickening of the inferior joint capsule implying adhesive capsulitis. Adhesive capsulitis is basically another name for frozen shoulder. Mild subacranial bursitis, that is when the sac in the joint has got inflammation in it. Um, and they've also put down here probable type 2 slap tear of the anterior superior glenoid labrum. I actually don't understand what that means and that's something that I'm going to have to delve into a little bit more. So what it's suggesting is that it's frozen shoulder with inflammation there and a couple of people very kindly wrote on my comments section in my last video to say that this is what it could be. This seems to be what the problem is. So I've had all this time on my hands and as most people know, I like to research stuff. Cause I suppose for me, I can't really understand how it's gone from like a niggling sensation to full blown, got no mo mobility in my arm. So anyway, I decided to do a lot of reading up about frozen shoulder and what it means, what are the long-term effects. It seems that it's not something that people are going to recover from quickly it can take up to three years um, and I think there are there are things that you can do to relieve it um, but I think it really depends where your adhesive capsulitis is and like what stage I've had a lot of time on my hands over the week so I have been looking up about frozen shoulder what the links are to different things. What I can make out from frozen shoulder is that it is an inflammatory condition which causes severe pain and stiffness in the shoulder. It can be classed into two forms, primary and secondary. Primary is typically idiopathic and has a really gradual onset. So I feel like that's what was happening with mine. Really, really gradual, I've had it if I look back, I had a niggling shoulder for, it's been over two years really. And the primary can be typically associated with things like diabetes, Parkinson's, thyroid problems. Um, and so I've got to think in something along those lines, but I will come back. And then there is secondary frozen shoulder issues, which are typically caused by injury to the shoulder or for example, like a torn rotator cuff or, or something like that, which will, will be quite sudden and bring on your frozen shoulder quite suddenly. Also people who have 
had a stroke or have had a brain injury or trauma are also quite susceptible to getting frozen shoulder. So going back to the whole inflammatory process with a frozen shoulder and the link, most of the stuff written on frozen shoulder is suggesting that it's it's common amongst people between the ages of 40 and 50. Um, especially in women as well. There's a little bit about the menopause and how there could be a bit of a correlation between frozen shoulder and menopause. Um, I think they're linking that because there's a high percentage of women that seem to have frozen shoulder in that age period where uh, women would be going through or might be going through the menopause. So to be honest, I was more interested in the fact that frozen shoulder is an inflammatory process because MS, we have inflammation in our body. Um, MS causes all sorts of issues and problems in our joints and muscles and stuff like that. And you know, there's a link between frozen shoulder and Parkinson's. You really do have to sort of delve into the reading and go quite deep into finding links between multiple sclerosis and frozen shoulder, but they are there and there does suggest connections between the two. My GP actually thinks the link is my MS. Um, I'm yet to obviously have all of that confirmed. I suppose it's each person's thought process on it. But I just think because it's inflammatory, I've never had an issue with my shoulder. I think that probably it is something along those lines. The other thing that you might be interested in, or not, I don't know, because COVID seems to come up and is blamed for most things, but I did notice it a couple of times when I was researching. It popped up quite a lot. You do have to do quite a deep research into it. It's not just there on the surface, but no wonder, because COVID gets blamed for everything. But there was a link between vaccinations and frozen shoulder and there was a report which said that since people have had COVID vaccinations, they have seen a larger number of people developing frozen shoulder issues. So I don't know. I'm just putting it out there that you can go and do your own research. I can even link some bits down below, but I didn't want to make the video about that because I don't know if it is about that but then equally there's no smoke without fire and generally there wouldn't be any information on it if that wasn't in some way the truth. So that's for you to go and have a little look yourself. Last week in my video I was showing you how I could move my arm but my arm has got to the point where it's completely immobile now. That's about as far as it will go. I can't actually even lift it up. I can't raise it up anymore. That's about that's about it. It doesn't really want to go any further. And if I try and push it, it's just so painful. It's now gone into my right arm. It's at the very early stages, but it's exactly the same pain. So that kind of movement is painful. Any movement out to the side, extending it out, um, and any reaching over the head like this. So to about here, it's, it's painful. I don't really understand why my right arm is now being affected. But again, some of the research that I've looked at says that if you've had it in your left arm, you will more than likely get it in your right arm and vice versa. I'm really sorry for the long video, but I want to cover this as much in depth as I can because I don't really know if this is anything to do with multiple sclerosis. It might be, it might not be. There's more information and more evidence to point towards the fact that people with MS are probably more susceptible to having frozen shoulder or to getting it at least. But really all I want anybody to do is to take away from this just to please be mindful if you've got a shoulder issue and you have MS or you really not even just MS. If anybody has a shoulder issue, please go and get it checked out because it could be frozen shoulder. It could be something more serious. Just in general, I think, you know, had I not have left this for so long, um, I'm, I might not be in the position that I'm in at the moment. 
so again i just want to say thank you to the people that commented um in particular andrew who reached out to me and spoke to me about something similar that he's gone through and he told me about this injection that you can have to help with frozen shoulder and it's called hydrodilation i think i'm saying it right but it's something along the lines of that anyway um so he explained to me that he's had it done he had the same issue and it's worked for him and he's still doing really well like five years down the line so it is something that i'm going in to have a consultation about tomorrow if they think that i am a suitable candidate for the injection and to have it done and i'm not too far past the stage then i am and hopefully should get that done tomorrow um i say hopefully it's not to say that i am not worried about it because i really am <laughs> at the end of the day i would rather go and get help than have my arm stuck like this and painful like for i'd who knows three years so that's kind of the update everybody sorry it's so long um but i i just always think it's so important to document these things because we don't know if it's our ms affecting this and this could be something for like future research if someone's looking into this i really hope everybody is keeping well and again if you're watching this because you've got a shoulder problem or you've even got a small niggle, please, please go and get it seen to. The more you leave it, the worse it will get and nobody wants that. Look after yourselves. I will be back to let you know the update again to see whether this has been resolved or not with the injection. And just a really big thank you to anybody who comments, shares, likes the videos on the channel because it's all contributing to raising money to go towards research to help people with MS. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care and see you soon. Bye.